Good morning, everybody. My apologies for running a couple minutes late trying to get my first setup going here. This is Teresa with Stampin' with Teresa. And bear with me just a couple moments longer. Hello, Teresa. Thank you for joining me on my live this morning. I'm just tuning in on my tablet so I can see comments with everybody. My apologies, it'll be just a minute. Um, let me know if this is bright enough for you. Um, if you can see everything here, it looks a little bit dark on my phone screen. Um, so hopefully that's not the case for you. Okay, pulling up my tablet here. Okay. I see myself. All right. Let me turn down the volume. Okay, you guys, I will try to answer comments as I go here. And please make sure, give me a thumbs up if you can see this as a landscape formation and you're seeing the celebration catalog and the mini catalog. I'm just going to go ahead and continue and I will do my best to catch comments um, as I go along. I've got it open on my tablet and otherwise you're just going to be seeing my hands for now. So my name is Teresa Forsyth. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I am really looking forward to presenting my very first ever Facebook Live with you all. Um, I have spent most of my independent Stampin' Up! demonstratorship as what they call a hobby demo, or um, some people call them uh, discount shoppers, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Um, I originally signed up back in 2006. I took a couple breaks along the way, um, and then, but I've been at it for, I would say, most of that period. Um, but I am a lifelong crafter, lifelong stamper. I first stamped when I was probably about 13 years old and was hooked ever since. It's appearing sideways. Okay, let's see. Shoot. Let's see if I can fix that. Maybe. Hmm. I don't know why it's doing that. I've got my phone landscape. Um, hi, Dawn. How are you? Let's see. Peering sideways. Oh my goodness. If anyone's ever done this before, if you have a tip on how to make it go normal ways, let me see. Let me try this. Okay. Sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. It's gonna give me a limited window of working, but I think that's okay. Let's move this this way. All right, you guys, is this better? Okay, good. All right, I'll try to work out this glitch in time for next week's to figure out how to make it go landscape. But I've got another problem that I need to... Sorry about the shakiness, you guys. I need to stabilize my... Um, tripod stand here with something heavy. Please pardon the technical difficulties. I'm going to use my label maker. Okay. All right. I think we've got something here. I think we're cooking with gas. 
put these here so you can see something cuter other than my tripod stand. Okay, I'll, I will work out these bugs for next week. Okay. So, we had the most exciting week here the last couple of days with Stampin' Up! and that uh, Stampin' Up! started their 2020 annual celebration sale. And this celebration, it starts started on the 3rd and goes through March 31st. What does this mean for you? Well, it means that you can get all kinds of free products uh, just by ordering normal stamps, ink, anything that you would do. There's level one and level two uh, freebies in here. And basically for every $50 you spend, you earn uh, a free set, a, a free something. I'm just going to walk you through really quickly um, some of the stamp sets. There's this adorable, the gang's all mirror. I've already seen tons of amazing um, samples using the meerkat stamp set and they're super cute. Another really great set is this lovely lily pad. You can also get coordinating dies with it, which is amazing. I have these and I have not yet created with it, but I'm about to. And if that weren't enough, it comes with a gorgeous set of designer series paper and it was hand painted with acrylic paints by an artist at Stampin' Up! and then photographed and made into this gorgeous paper and it's kind of got that Monet vibe to it. It is gorgeous. You could get um, an accessory set with metallic baker's twine and sequins. It's really fun. These colors coordinate really well with the new Birthday Bonanza suite that's in the mini catalog that was just released. We've got a gorgeous birthday set. Oh, hi, Mom. My mom joined us. <laughs> okay, and then we've got a kerchief card kit. We've got some amazing designer series. This is specialty designer series paper with the bees. It coordinates with the honeybee set in the in the um, new spring catalog and this has gold foiling on it. It's black and white with gold foiling. It's amazing. This is one of my favorite sets. It's a beautiful uh, sentiment set. We're actually going to be using this today. You have another great set, Thoughtful Blooms, and a level two coordinating punch. So if you spend $100, you can get that punch. Another amazing uh, set is this bundle that comes with this beautiful kind of Japanese art uh, stamp set. And then it comes with a crackle background. It's like a stone uh, embossing folder. It's gorgeous. We will be working with this in the next couple of weeks, I promise. And then finally, the piece de resistance is this gorgeous little ladybug set. The only way you can get this is if you host a party or have a personal order that's $300. It's the only way you can get this set. Um, so if you want to gather some friends together and figure out a way to place an order that, you know, a workshop order that would get you to that $300 mark to get this free set, um, it's worth it. In fact, another little special hint, Stampin' Up! is about to release some coordinating dies, so it will cut out these little images. So cute. Also part of Stampin' Up! Um, celebration is the joining special. So please ignore my little handwritings on here, but basically this is an excellent time to join as a demonstrator. And being a demonstrator doesn't mean you have to work a crazy business and do all sorts of things to work a business, but it you can just become a demonstrator for the discount. And let me tell you what you get for only $99 for starting now. This is the best time of the year to join. You get $125 worth of Stampin' Up! products in your kit. Just you get to pick that. But in addition to that, and that's not, that's always a good deal anyway, to get $125 of literally anything you want. It can be ink pads, stamp sets, dies, punches, ribbons, adhesive, literally anything you want. And, um, in addition to anything that you want, you are going to get a trimmer. It's a little guillotine trimmer. It's tiny. It's like probably the size of this. It's like six inches tall. Okay. And it's, you don't need to worry about replacement blades. It's kind of a self-sharpening blade. Then you get this amazing 
pack of paper and it's a sampling of most of the paper packs featured in the new mini catalog as well as some of the celebration paper. You can see it's got the, the lily pad uh, paper there that we just talked about. And as if that wasn't awesome enough, you get your choice of a free stamp set, any stamp set you want with the exception of the free set. So nothing from the celebration catalog and not the hostess sets from the, the mini catalog or the annual catalog, but any stamp set. I think the most expensive stamp set is $42. I think that's the rooted in nature stamp, stamp set in our annual catalog, but literally any stamp set. Um, so if you are interested in becoming a demonstrator and joining my team, I would love to happy have, have you. I welcome anyone with open arms. Um, and I myself offer quite a few perks. Part of the uh, Stampin' Up! starter kit, you get a few little business supplies. And among the business supplies, you get a free um, paper pumpkin kit. And the paper pumpkin is our monthly stamping kit. And it comes with a little stampin' spot, little ink spot. It's like a it's an ink pad, but it's tiny. It's like an inch little square. It's like a little cube of ink that you get. It has a stamp set that usually has a lot of versatility to it. And then you get all the stuff that you need to make a lot of cards each month. Cards or treat boxes or, you know, they come up with really beautiful projects and it's a really nicely curated kit. And it's around $20 a month. Um, now is also a great time to sign up for a few months subscription to that because, again, if you spend $50, you get a free something from inside the celebration kit. So please let me know if you have any questions. I will be, you know, popping out some information pretty regularly about celebration throughout the duration of the event, which is, of course, between now and March 31st. If you haven't had a chance to take a peek at the new January through June 2020 mini catalog, uh, let me know. If you don't have a demonstrator, I would love to send you a copy of this catalog as well as the celebration catalog. And I'll even send you the uh, annual catalog if you don't have one of those either. So just let me know. You can private message me if you'd like to. Oh, hi, Dawn. Nice to see you. Um, I haven't seen any comments as of yet. If you have questions, please let me know. I'm not going to go through this entire catalog today because there's so much wonderful stuff in it. I just can't even begin to tell you what's in there. Today, we are going to focus on the Peaceful Poppies Suite. And let me just show you real quick. It starts on page 24 and 25. And this suite comes, this is a giant suite, and it comes with uh, two different bundles with stamp sets and dies. Here's some of the samples on here. They're beautiful. Really beautiful. Here, you can see that there's this Peaceful Poppies Designer Series paper. And this is really vibrant. This Facebook Live camera work does nothing to show off how beautiful it is, but I'm going to do my best anyway. But it comes with two bundles, the Painted Poppies bundle. This is the bundle we're going to uh, play with today. There's a second bundle called the Peaceful Moments bundle, and that's a sentiment set with some really beautiful dyes as well. Part of the suite includes some sequins. We're going to be playing with some of those sequins today. This awesome uh, crinkled seam binding ribbon. It's whisper white, which means you can make it any color you want. And on the third project today, I'm going to show you how to make it from uh, whisper white to old olive. Okay. And then the peaceful poppies elements here. There's a, a set of die cut stickers, uh, watercolor images that you can watercolor pop out some vellum. It's amazing. We're not going to play with that today, but I promise we will play with that coming up. Okay, so let's move into showing you exactly what the suite entails. And this is where I don't know if you can see this whole sheet. I put together this little sheet that shows the front and back side of each of the papers. You get 12 sheets of paper, six double-sided papers, so two of each uh, 
six double-sided papers and they are just beautifully coordinated together. This sweet, this uh, designer series paper actually coordinates with nine Stampin' Up! colors. That's right, they used nine colors to create this paper. And it's just a beautiful, rich rainbow of colors, starting with Poppy Parade, Calypso Coral, Flirty Flamingo, Crushed Curry, Old Olive, Mossy Meadow, Pool Party, Rich Rosalberry, and Blackberry Bliss. Okay, um, we are going to play with mainly Poppy Parade and Blackberry Bliss today and some pool party. So I look forward to showing you this paper. Okay, the set we are going to play with today is the Painted Poppies Bundle. I stamped out the images and cut out the dies to kind of give you an idea of what is included in this bundle. This bundle is $52 for both things, which means you get about a 10% savings. The stamp set is $23. The die set is $35. But these are versatile dies. You can use these with any stamp set. And then these are a very versatile uh, stamp set. Flowers are always you do with birthday, thank yous, thinking of yous, um, sympathy, wedding, this can go run the gamut of occasions. It really, really can. And then there's a die cut. It might be hard to see, but I cut these out with a die. So I stamped it and then die cut these two images. And then this leaf comes with a die cut. Okay. The other bundle that is included in this suite is the Peaceful Moments bundle. I went ahead and printed or cut out a lot of the dies and piece them together so you could see what it would look like together. And then there's kind of this background kind of filigree sketchy poppy image that you can incorporate into your cards as well. And then these are the sentiments in the Peaceful Moment stamp set. We are going to use this stamp set today. Okay, well I don't know about you guys but I'm ready to get stamping. Stay tuned till the end of this video because we're going to talk about um, a really special deal that I have for you guys. Uh, I'm going to just tease it real quick, but if you order the Painted Poppies bundle that we're working with today, I will send you a sample of the 12 by 12 designer series paper. I'm going to send you one 6 by 6 cut a square of each sheet of paper. So you'll get each sheet of paper in a six by six size. You can make a ton of cards <laughs> with just this small amount of paper. I love this one. I love this color palette. So pretty. And this in particular is kind of an amazing piece of paper. We're going to use this today for our first two projects. I'm going to show you how you can literally use this paper and a sentiment. We're going to stamp it right up there and you've got a great card to send to anyone. Okay. In addition to that little sample, I'm going to send you six card bases. So you can make six cards out of this little paper pack. I'm going to send you Poppy Parade, Calypso Coral, Crushed Curry, Old Olive, P Pool Party, and Rich Razzleberry. Okay. In addition, I'm going to send you six card front panels in the Whisper White cardstock. So you've got enough here to make at least six cards. And if you have your own cardstock at home, you can make even more because this will make a ton of, of cards for you. So let's get stamping. The first card we're going to make is really simple and it would qualify in, as the Stampin' Up! has a campaign called hashtag simple stamping and that means paper, ink, and glue basically. We're using the Poppy Parade card base today. I'm just going to go ahead and use my bone folder and give this a really good crease down here. We have a card front piece that the card base is trimmed at uh, five and a half by 11, and then it's a full sheet of card stock, an eight and a half by 11 card, sh card stock, turned landscaped and trimmed at five and a half, and then we score it at four and a quarter to make this card base, okay? And then this is trimmed down with an eighth of an inch border on all sides. And then I also trimmed down a piece of Whisper White to put on the inside. So you can write your message really easily. 
First thing we're going to do is stamp our sentiment using the Poppy Parade ink pad. And we are going to make this just a really quick thank you card. So using the thank you sentiment, oops, sorry, the thank you sentiment from the Peaceful Moments stamp set, this is what we're going to do. I like to do a test stamp always. And we are going to just stamp this in this upper right corner. And just like that, you have a really beautiful card or front to a card. Next thing, just take some glue. We are going to apply glue to the back of this panel. And we are just going to layer this right on front, center it right on the front of the card base there. Now be careful running your fingers over that ink space. It dries pretty quickly, but the reds tend to take a little bit longer to absorb into the paper fiber, which means that you might have a chance if you don't uh, wait long enough to smear that ink a little bit. I like to use my bone folder when I use the liquid glue to kind of spread that glue out. Next thing we're going to do is just glue this panel to the inside. I usually like to stamp or embellish the inside somehow. Um, and depending on how much you like to write in your card, you can decorate it a lot or not at all. So if you just want this whole space to be a place to write the message to your recipient, then don't stamp anything. But if you want to add that special touch, here's the card I stamped yesterday. And I just put, I had a little extra bit of the designer series paper, so I just put that along the bottom. In addition, I went ahead and used one of the poppies from the uh, stamp set and went ahead and stamped it right on here and I used another little trimming of the paper so my envelope is also decorated. So when you get, when your recipient gets this, it's real special. It's gonna come in the mail and they're gonna know, hey, here's a card, someone's thinking of you and it's not a bill, so yay. Okay, I haven't seen any comments or anything, um, but let me know if you guys have anything that you need to ask. But anyway, literally that took all of three minutes to make a beautiful card that anyone would love to receive. Okay, let's move on to our next project, which is, has a little bit more to it. It's a stepped up version of that first card. This time we're going to use Rich Razzleberry as our card base. Make sure I have all my little things here. This is going to be a top folding card. And again, I took a sheet of the 8.5 by 11 cardstock. This time, because I wanted a top folding card, I cut that sheet at four and a quarter. So I had two halves of the one sheet. And then I scored it at five and a half. For this sheet, I went ahead and punched out two of these in case I make a little uh, little boo-boo, but we're going to stamp our sentiment on there. I also stamped out that beautiful uh, scallop lacy trim edge. We're going to use that on this card. I trimmed out another beautiful piece of that paper. Look how vibrant and rich it is against this rich razzleberry. Uh, cardstock. Now this I trimmed a little bit larger so it would have a smaller border because I just wanted it so. <laughs> We're also going to be using some of the sequins and this Whisper White ribbon today. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and quickly glue this panel to the inside of the card. And we will go ahead and make sure that's centered. I also cut this larger to kind of mirror what's going on on the outside of the card. Go ahead and smooth out that glue. Okay, let's set this aside for a minute. Let's go ahead and stamp. On this card, we are going to make a happy birthday card. And we're going to use the Memento Black ink for this one. Let's see here. Okay, pat it in there. Do a little test run. 
Okay. I didn't like how that turned out, so give it some more ink. Try it again. Much better. Okay. Sorry I keep hitting the tripod. It's right because of the way that the video was filming. It's right to the right of my right hand, which is my working hand. So I keep hitting it, and I'm sorry about that. Okay, that turned out really nice. So we're going to go with it. I don't even need to use the backside or the other uh, label that I die cut, and now I have a label for another project. Okay, real quickly, I am going to clean off the stamp. Oh wait, I don't need to yet. I'm sorry. But I am going to get my baby wipe ready here. I like to use baby wipes to clean my stamps. Stampin' Up! has what they call a stamp chamois, and it's a really good way of cleaning your stamps too. Um, but a couple years ago, I bought like a Costco size version or a package of baby wipes. So I need to get through these babies because I don't have a baby to wipe. <laughs> so I still need to use it for this card or for cleaning stamps. Okay, so we're using the Poppy Parade ink and we're using that splatter image that's in the stamp set. I'm going to stamp off because I don't want the full red on here because when I was playing with this yesterday, I found that it kind of looked a little bit like blood splatter a little bit <laughs> and I kind of didn't like how that looked. So I'm just kind of stamping it on the edge here. And then now I'm going to clean this off because now we're going to use the rich razzleberry. And Poppy Parade is a beautiful rich color um, and I love it for so many things but for some reason it just felt kind of off with the splatter uh, image. So, I mean, you might see what I'm talking about there. <laughs> okay, enough with my macabre. Okay, these stamp pads really aren't that hard to open. I have an older version which opens differently than the newer version, so I get a little uh, mixed up from time to time on that. So on the Rich Razzleberry, it's a dark color, but I'm going to go with it because I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to turn it around a little bit and stamp off so you get that second generation ink a little bit lighter of a color. So you get some variegation going on in here and then we'll do it again stamp it with full strength there flip it around and kind of put it over here second generation for that lighter look I really like how that turned out I've always liked this splatter paint look for some reason <laughs> okay when I was a teenager uh, I had a friend Yvette in her bedroom both her and her sister her parents let her they did splatter paint on their walls, and I was like, what? <laughs> your parents let you paint on your walls, and it looked really cool, and I was really jealous of it, actually. Okay, next thing. Let's go ahead and tie a pretty bow around the bottom of this panel. And some people are really gifted at leaving the ribbon on the spool when they tie things to a card, but if I were just making a bow I could do it, but since I'm tying it onto this panel, I can't have it, for me I just can't have it hooked to the spool while I do this. But for me I tie bows kind of just like tying a shoelace. There's lots of methods in bow tying, and go ahead and get on YouTube and Google how to tie a bow or search how to tie a bow and you'll be amazed at all the all the ways there are to tie a bow. But my tried and true method is just kind of like a lace or a shoelace and then if you hold the knot in the center and kind of pull at the tails, you can work your bow to make it look like pretty and perfect. And I think I like how that's looking right now, so I'm just going to even this up. I'm going to trim the tails. You'll notice these scissors are just a regular pair of Fisker scissors. They're not Stampin' Up! scissors. Um, I love the Stampin' Up! paper snips, but I like them only for my paper. I like to have a pair of scissors dedicated just for ribbon. So if you're wondering why I have that going on, that is why. Okay, so I'm going to do a little dry fit here before I glue this to... Oops! 
to the card front and I like I think I like that I'm gonna maybe bump this up just a little bit so you kind of just gauge and see what you you like and what looks good to you and I think I'm gonna like that right there so I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna glue her down okay so the reason why I chose to work with the stamp set today is because um, you know how the holidays have come and gone and it's always that weird little letdown after the holidays and going back to normal life. And I thought, let's cheer ourselves up with this colorful, beautiful, cheery paper. Um, I just really love this paper. And I thought it could be very cheerful. As we embark on winter, we can look at these beautiful flowers. Okay, I'm going to use my pick tool. Take your pick tool. I'm going to get a glue dot here, mini glue dot, and I'm going to kind of roll it up a little bit. You can kind of see if you grab it onto your tool, you can roll it up a little bit. And I'm going to stick it underneath this knot of the bow just to keep that bow tacked down in place so it's not going to move. Okay, so the next thing is I'm going to use a couple Stampin' Dimensionals. We are going to pop this up because I say, why waste an opportunity to put dimension on your card? Am I still in frame? Okay. I'm liberal with my dimensionals, by the way. I don't like things to, I think they're close enough that it's not going to cause a middle to sag here. I want to put this up a little bit enough because I'm going to glue this beautiful little scallop accent here. Kind of right below there. So I just want this up far enough to get that under. You can remove, that one's giving me trouble. I just trimmed my nails so they're really short. <laughs> but usually I can get these off no problem. Okay, there we go. Okay. Go ahead and kind of get that centered. All right, and then we will take this and put some of our liquid glue on it. Okay. And now we will Kind of center that there. Okay. Because of the camera angle, I'm having a little bit of a hard time seeing it, but I think that looks good. Yeah, I like it. I like what we've done here. Okay. And now for a final little touch. Oh, I don't know why I just put my glue away. We're going to need it for adding sequins. I've never met a sequin I didn't like. <laughs> And we're actually going to pick out some of these black sequins. I really like the matte black look on them. And some of them have these beautiful little flower shapes. So I'm going to do three. I'm going to mix between the flowers and just the, the regular cup shape. I'm going to do two flowers because I'm in a flowery mood. I'm going to do one right like that. I think I like the position of these like so. I like to follow the design principle of working in threes. And I kind of, for some reason, just want everything down at this bottom of this sheet, even though there's some white space up there. I just think it's really pretty like this. So I'm choosing to, these sequins can be a little staticky, so, but I don't want to lose it because I know I'm going to use that someday. Okay, so now that I know where I want these things, I'm going to go ahead and dot some glue. And you just need your liquid glue. You don't need anything special or fancy. Um, you can use mini glue dots if you want, if you prefer that. I know not everybody is a fan of liquid glue. And okay, there we go. We'll go ahead and use that putty end of the take your pick tool. And oops, sometimes it helps to remove this end. 
to hold that down. So putty is sticky. There we go. Let me press it down. There's some kind of little white thing on that, but as soon as that glues down, I'll get it off. Okay. And let's go ahead and put the glue here. Whoops. I've got butterfingers today. Obviously, this putty is not messing around today. See that little putty end of the tip? It's really handy for picking up small little things like sequins. Okay, and then we will put another little dab of glue. I like to say a little dab will do ya. Okay, and... Just like that, we have a finished card. I really like how this one turned out. So simple. Sometimes, you know, less can really be more. If you go to Pinterest, um, you can search the Painted Poppies uh, stamp set and you will find a ton of ideas and inspiration for this um, stamp set. I liked to let the paper... Um, kind of guide me when I'm doing this, but I use inspiration a lot too. Hold on, let me get this. That thing doesn't want to go away. Okay, so there we have a beautiful completed birthday card. And we've got an envelope, and you can stamp your envelope. Here's the sample I made yesterday. You can see what I'm talking about with that full strength uh, poppy parade. I did a little bit different with the sequins. I used two of the cups and put one there, there, and there. So you can do whatever you want. I also had a slice of that uh, designer series paper, so I adhered it to the inside just for some extra interest, and then went ahead and did a rich razzleberry version of that poppy and the small splatter spot. I really liked it. Now, when you're a demonstrator, you get to go do fun things um, with the company, and most recently we had our on-stage event, and that meant that I got to go down and meet up with a bunch of my team members, um, and I met a lot of other demonstrators, and we got to do make and takes, and that's where we first saw this uh, mini catalog, and that's when I was first in love with this Painted Poppies stamp set, because it's incredible. So we did this as a make and take at the event. And this is where I'm going to show you that you can dye your ribbon using Stampin' Blends markers or re-inkers or your ink pads or the regular markers. You can really dye anything that comes in Whisper White in the ribbon families with our products. Today, we're just going to use the Light Old Olive, but I wanted to show you that yesterday I was playing around and I made a variegated version of that ribbon. So I used both the light and the dark old olive stamp and blends to kind of make an ombre looking ribbon here. It was really fun. Okay, so we're gonna do a little bit different though. I didn't wanna do exactly the same thing as the make and take. So here's our inspiration card. We're gonna do a thick whisper white card base. I love the thick whisper white. When Stampin' Up! came out with that, I was just like, Ah, finally, because the Whisper White is a great cardstock, but it's thin. The regular stuff is really thin, so it kind of made for a card base that was a little bit kind of flimsy a little bit. But I went ahead and gave myself two little panels for stamping in case I mess up. <laughs> and then we've got these two pieces. So instead of this red paper, we're going to use this purple version. It has the pool party splatters in there. And then this is actually the reverse side of that. So I thought, we're going to keep that. I like that old olive. So what we're going to do is this, we're going to do tone on tone stamping here. And let me go ahead and set this aside and move these stamp pads away. Oops. So sorry. Hi, Lori. Hi, Bethany. Lori, yes, I'm back from Germany. Um, I went to Germany for Christmas time to see my brother and his family. It was a great time. The 
German people, man, they go crazy at Christmas time. There's like Christmas trees everywhere. It was just so beautiful out there. Um, and then I got the chance to go visit Prague, which was even more amazing. So I got to go to a couple of the Christmas markets and they were really amazing. I was so blessed. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and open up the stamp set and we're going to take out this, which is the lion version of the poppy. And we're going to use this leaf. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and clear off my stamp box here. Go ahead and pop that on. And then we'll pop this one on. All right. It's so simple. I love how they cling. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do, I know you're going to be shocked to see this. I'm going to stamp to make sure I get a good impression. So sorry I keep knocking that camera, you guys. I haven't used this ink pad in a while, so it might be slightly dry, but I think it'll work. We'll go with it. So I'm going to kind of start in the middle here, and I'm just going to kind of stamp all around, stamp off the edges. We're kind of making like our own version of designer series paper here. Just doing real random stamping. I'm leaving a little bit of room in there because I do want to put the leaves in there. And we're going to go tone on tone once again. And it's okay if the leaf overlaps a little bit with the um, poppies because number one nothing ever has to be perfect when you're making a handmade card so it's handmade it should look a little bit handmade in my opinion oops boo boo that's okay that paper will cover it up that happens when you get a little aggressive in the ink like I tend to do I'm a little heavy-handed okay I'm gonna go ahead and pop this one just like so and I just hit that again. My apologies. Um, you know what? I kind of like how it is. I know there's a little extra space here, but that's okay. Let's go with it. Close up this pack. And now we're going to go to our basic gray. And this is where we're going to use a stamp set or a stamp from the celebration sending you thoughts set i really love the font in this so we're going to use the happy birthday make it another birthday card in my opinion you can't have too many uh birthday cards i feel like is this yeah this will work okay let's see so what we're going to do is we're going to check positioning here also to make sure that i'm going to stamp this straight See, it's now I know I need to kind of turn my hand a little bit. Let's do it again. Let's see if we can get that lined up. There, perfect. Because every time you put your um, card or your stamp on, it's never really perfect. So it's good to see where you're at. Okay. And I'm going to kind of stamp it right down, right about kind of eh, two thirds of the way down. And if we don't like it, we can flip it over. And I'm not in love with that because I don't think it stamped real great on the B. That's my bad. Okay, we'll go ahead and stamp it there right again. There, much better. Let's go ahead and clean that off. Okay. Oops, all right. I didn't get the ink on there. Okay, so let's get to assembling here. Oh wait, before we assemble, we need to dye our ribbon. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of basically copy what we did on our sample. And we're gonna wrap this around twice. So we want it long enough so we can color it and tie a pretty bow. So again, using 
the light old olive blend marker stamp and blend we're going to color this and it is literally as easy as this and it dries really fast you guys it's alcohol based so it dries in a flash and it bleeds through that fabric perfectly. So it's colored on both sides. Alcohol markers are pure magic in my opinion, and it's already dry, so not coming off of my hands. Isn't that pretty? Well, I guess it came off a little bit, but I think that was from coloring. Okay, so let's tie this on. And wrap it around like so and just make a little pretty bow hi Patty thanks for joining me and thank you I love it I love creating and it's fun to get going on this and Bethany I'm so glad you love the poppy stamps I love them too I love poppies they're just so rich in color here in the Seattle area we actually grow poppies really well um, for some reason, cause I always thought they were better in like drier environments, but some people have amazing poppy gardens in their yards. And of course, since I'm on camera, I cannot tie a bow to save my life. There we go. Okay. I think we did it. I think we got her. All right, ladies. And just fuss with it until you have it the way you want it. Remember the trick of holding down that knot and tugging there we go and I want to leave these tails just a little bit longer so I'm really only going to cut this one to match the other since I cut it off it's amazing that that's the only amount of ribbon waste I have so I'm pretty happy with that now on the sample they tore the edge of that sentiment. So we can go ahead and do that. That's not my personal favorite technique, but I'm gonna show you how to do it because it does add interest. And you just take it and you just kind of just slowly tear it and you can kind of make it go up a little bit, but you get pretty good control surprisingly and you can kind of fuss the edges, curl it up a little bit. I don't know why I have never really been a fan of the tearing, maybe because I just like things to be neat usually um, and it kind of has that edge to it but I think that turned out really well and I'm happy with it so let us quickly do a dry fit on here and we are gonna put these panels of paper cattywampus let's see I think we'll do it this way so we'll cover up some of that nakedness there. And then this is going to be popped up and go about here. And it's going to perfectly cover up that boo-boo there. That's the one thing about making cards is there's usually no boo-boo that you can't hide in disguise. So let's go ahead and glue this piece down. Again, making it slightly skewed. And we'll glue this pretty purple flower pattern down. So Patty is my upline, Patty Bennett. And I, I have been following her for since before as a demonstrator, that's for sure. And look, I got glue on my fingers and made a little mess um back in the day like when blogs were first getting like really popular and uh, she was one of the first stamping blogs i followed patty stamps so you should check her out okay and then we're gonna just glue this blue panel on pool party 
and I'm not worrying about that little smudge I made with my fingers and the glue um, because this panel is going to cover it right up. Okay. <laughs> Patty. Oh, thanks, Patty. I'm glad you like this with the blue. I really liked it too. I thought I want to do case that card from the on stage, but I don't want to copy it exactly. Um, so I was like, you know what? It needs pool party. I need a little pool party in my life. Blue tones are my favorite. I love blue. It's always been my favorite color in all shades of blue, really. Okay. Going to pop this up with Stampin' Dimensionals. And you guys, this is actually our final project of the day. And I'm glad you're still with me because I'm going to kind of go over a few things with you. As I was mentioning, I spent most of my um, Stampin' Up! Demonstratorship, demonstratorship as what is known as a hobby demo. And after going to onstage... Uh, and meeting so many people on my team and meeting Patty in person for the first time and just seeing how together they all have it and they're so inspirational and it was so fun to be there and I was like you know what I need to make more of a go of this and I have a full-time job in fact it's not just any job it's a pretty demanding job and I work a lot of hours each week but I thought you know if I love this and Stampin fills my tank then why not make a go of it um so here I am, and here we are on Facebook Live, and I'm showing you some really beautiful cards that are just so simple and easy. So let's recap what we created today. So our first card was a very simple card, just using paper and stamp and ink. Hashtag simple stamping right here. Thank you. We stepped that one up, changed the colors, added a die cut label, some ribbon, and some really pretty sequins from that suite. And then this one is still pretty simple actually, um, and it's got a lot more stamping going on there. So I really like how that turned out. So let me show you once again some specials I have for you today. As we discussed earlier, we have celebration that we're doing right now. It's an annual Stampin' Up! promotional event. And I'm going to clear this scratch paper away for now. Actually, I'll just fold it over. So, let me get my cheat sheets here because I made some notes. Now, first, I literally launched my new website this morning, right before we got on here, <laughs> right before we came together. My new website is Stampin' with Teresa com, and it's pretty bare bones right now. It's got seriously just the basics, but I'm working on it, and it's going to be up to its full um, deal, hopefully by the end of this week. Okay, now here's what I have for you. So if you would like to place an order with me, I recommend that you use this host code, which is U, D like dog, V like Victor, 6, Z like zebra, A like apple, J, and R. Okay, what does that mean? When you go through and place an order, um, and if you go to my website, you will be directed to my shopping site with Stampin' Up! And you can go in and fill your cart with all sorts of goodies. And um, when you place your order, you just go ahead and place this host code in there. Do not use this host code if your order totals more than $150 before tax and shipping. If you go over 150 you're gonna get um you're gonna have your own celebration stuff and other stamp and rewards and i want you to get those benefits but if you use this host code for all other orders number one all orders with me anytime get a handmade thank you card because i really appreciate customers and want you to know how much i appreciate you if you place an order of 30 dollars or more 
you will be eligible for my monthly prize drawing. And this month's prize is going to be the stamp set, Peaceful Moments. So you'll have a chance to win this for free for $30 or more. And you will have access to my VIP group. And what that means is you'll get it through June. And that means that you will get a catalog when the next annual catalog comes out. I'll automatically mail that to you for free. And you'll get access to some exclusive content that I'm creating just for my VIP group. Okay. And um, I'll also let you know about the deals, but it's mostly going to be about creativity, sharing, maybe even some swaps and prize patrols, all kinds of fun stuff going on in there. And if you're not a Facebook person, which would be kind of weird since you're seeing me on Facebook here right now, <laughs> but if you prefer to receive a newsletter, I'll send that stuff in a newsletter as well. Now, all orders of $50 or more receive this month. Well, between, actually, let me clarify. This is between now and January 24th. So through January 24th, I will send you a brand new bolt of this crinkled seam binding ribbon as a free thank you gift. In addition to the handmade card and in addition to eligibility for the prize patrol for the Peaceful Moment stamp, stamp set and um, in addition to um, the VIP access. So you'll get that crinkled seam binding ribbon, and then plus you're going to get one free celebration item. And if you spend $75 or yeah, a hundred dollars, you spend hundred dollars, you'll get two free celebration items. So remember that stamp set we use today, this is free. And the only way you can get it is to spend $50. Okay. That's part of the celebration process, but the grand prize package today is if you order this painted poppies bundle which includes this stamp set and this die set if you order this bundle you will get everything that I've already talked about so including the handmade thank you card the chance to win the peaceful moments set the uh, crinkled seam binding and uh, celebration items but this is how you're going to get that paper sample free I will ship this to you so you will automatically get this if you order this bundle with me. So you get one six by six sheet of each of the papers. And we went through this a little bit earlier. They're so beautiful. You're going to get six card bases in a variety of colors that coordinate with this designer series paper. And then six whisper white uh, card fronts. Again, you're going to be able to create more than six cards with all of this paper, but this is just get you started. And then um, if you end up spending more than $150, uh, I recommend that go ahead and do that. But I recommend that you consider joining as a demonstrator uh, for the celebration. And there's literally no strings attached. If you if it's not for you after you've joined, you got your free kit, you don't have to return it, you can keep it. And you know, we'll still be friends. So just go ahead and consider that. And if you have any questions on how to join, please contact me. And you can do that by email message um, or contact me through my website. So again, using this host code from today through January 24th. We'll get a new host code on the 25th and a new special will start at that point. So I am going to go ahead and let you guys get on with your day. I appreciate your time today. Again, visit my website. I am on Instagram, Stampin' with Teresa. I have a YouTube channel. Uh, I'm going to be putting out more content on the YouTube channel. Actually, today I'll be putting up a new video as well and with different projects. Oh, oh my gosh, I almost forgot. The biggest news of all, I have a new class to go featuring the um, From My Heart Suite. Let me show you. And this is on my website as well. I can't believe I almost forgot to tell you guys this. This is a really cool deal. So using this suite, it includes the Heartfelt Bundle. The details are on my website. We're making five cards and 
one treat box. So go ahead and visit my website to figure out more details and how to participate in this class. It's a really good deal. And uh, if you order the full option one, you will get a free set of these faceted gems, a full brand new package of those faceted gems. Let me show you. I've got them over here. Oh, I thought I did. Here they are. Let me show you these cl up close and personal because these are stunningly gorgeous. Look at how those sparkle. They are so beautiful. So, and you would use them like you'd use sequins or gems or anything like the self-adhesive rhinestones or pearls. So go ahead and visit my website. I will be back 9 a.m. Pacific time every Saturday with Facebook Live. These were really simple projects. Uh, I will have more projects and they'll be more difficult. They won't always be this easy. Um, so if you're beyond a beginner and want to learn some fun fold techniques or things like that, stay tuned. I hope you'll join me. Thank you again so much, you guys. And thanks, Patty and Lori and Dawn and everybody for your support. Bethany, Mom, it was great to see you. Don Stein, um, I really appreciate everyone hanging with me today. Have a great Saturday, you guys. Bye.